Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Murat. Today we are in Deuteronomy chapter 29, and we begin our study in verse 22, and this is lecture number 43 in our verse by verse study through the book of Deuteronomy. And Father, we ask that you would add your blessing to the word that we are about to study. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, God has been um, promising the Israelites tremendous blessing for their obedience and also warning them of some terrible catastrophes that will come on them in the land that they are about to possess if they turn away from him. And as we come to verse 22 of Deuteronomy 29, God gives one reason for his severe punishment that they can expect if they sin. Let's read it. So that the coming generation of your children who rise up after you and the foreigner who comes from a far land would say when they see the plagues of that land and the sicknesses which the Lord has laid on it, God's punishment, you see, isn't just his holy justice at work. It is also designed to be a deterrent to all who see it. He wants people to know that sin is not worth it. 23. The whole land is brimstone, salt, and burning. It is not sown, nor does it bear, nor does any grass grow there, like the overflow or overthrow, I should say, of Sodom and Gomorrah, Adma and Zeboim, which the Lord overthrew in his anger and his wrath. Other nations are going to see the terrible mess in Israel and, uh, and and the land is going to look like a charred like the charred remains of a forest fire and, and other people are going to see that and they're not going to believe their eyes this one's beautiful fertile pasture land looking like Sodom and Gomorrah after it was overthrown in a moment of time by Almighty God because of their sin 24 all nations would say, why has the Lord done so to this land? What does the heat of this great anger mean? Other nations are going to look at the horrible mess Israel is, is in and they're going to ask the question, what made God so angry at them? Verse 25, then people would say, because they have forsaken the covenant of the Lord God of their fathers, which he made with them when he brought them out of the land of Egypt. For they went and served other gods and worshipped them, gods that they did not know and that he had not given to them. And there's the answer. That's why it looks like a charred mess. That's why it looks like Sodom and Gomorrah. Simple answer. They put other things and other so-called gods before the Lord God. They started doing things that were an abomination to him Verse 27, Then the anger of the Lord was aroused against this land to bring on it every curse that is written in this book. God's anger exploded. He followed through with his threats. He did what he warned them they would, that he would do if they sinned and would not repent. He did it. 28, And the Lord uprooted them from their land in anger, in wrath, and in great indignation and cast them into another land as it is to this day and God did that too he plucked them out of their land like an like an unwanted weed in a garden get rid of it 29 the secret things belong to the Lord our God but those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever that we may do all the words of this law the secret things belong to the Lord our God don't worry about the things that you don't understand. There are many mysteries about God, and some people just can't get past them. They get hung up on them. And they ignore all the things that are crystal clear in the Holy Scriptures that God has given us. And so don't worry about the things that you do not understand. 
Make sure you attend to the things that you do understand. That's what God is saying here. Chapter 30, verse 1. Now it shall come to pass, when all these things come upon you, and the blessing and the curse which I have set before you, and you call them to mind among the nations where the Lord your God drives you. And so, God is saying that the blessings of obedience and the curses of disobedience will come to pass. And they did. And afterwards, God says, when you Israelites are scattered throughout the world and you finally wake up and you finally start taking my word seriously. In verse 2, And you return to the Lord your God and obey His voice according to all that I command you today, you and your children, with all your heart and with all your soul. In other words, when you come to your spiritual senses and start following me with all your heart, says God. Verse 3, That the Lord your God will bring you back from captivity and have compassion on you and gather you again from all the nations where the Lord your God has scattered you. God says, When that happens, I'll restore the good times to you. One thing about the Lord our God, He does not hold a grudge. 4. If any of you are driven out to the farthest parts under heaven, from there the Lord your God will gather you, and from there He will bring you. No matter how far away from home you may have been taken, God says, I will bring you back. It will be the way it should have been all along. Verse 5, Then the Lord your God will bring you to the land which your fathers possessed, and you shall possess it. He will prosper you and multiply you more than your fathers. God says, When you repent, I'll give you the good life your fathers once enjoyed. In fact, I'll make it even better for you. Verse 6, And the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your descendants to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul that you may live. It is only the grace of God if we have a heart for God. And God says to Israel, one of these days, you will obey me. And it won't be just an outward obedience. God says you will serve me because you want to serve me. And that's the way it should be. For all of us. And I think that's the way it is for a true Christian. We want to serve God. We want to please God. Even when we are not doing it. Even when we are failing, we want to do it. 7. Also, the Lord your God will put all these curses on your enemies and on those who hate you and persecuted you. God says, anyone who has hurt you will answer to me. And if someone is out to get you, then I will get them. That is his attitude toward his obedient children. Verse 8. And you will again obey the voice of the Lord and do all his commandments which I command you today. God says you're going to have a fresh start. God is always willing to give us a fresh start if we want to make one. Verse 9. The Lord your God will make you abound in all the work of your hand, in the fruit of your body, in the increase of your livestock and in the produce of your land for good. For the Lord will again rejoice over you for good as He rejoiced over your fathers. They will enjoy life. Once they decide that they're going to start obeying God and they're going to live with Him or for Him with all of their heart, they're going to enjoy life. And God will once again enjoy them. 10. If you obey the voice of the Lord your God to keep His commandments and His statutes which are written in this book of the law. And if you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and there is the condition. They must serve the Lord with all of their hearts. God is ready to bless the best that He can if people will only live for Him the best that they can. Verse 11. For this commandment which I command you today is not too mysterious for you, nor is it far off. God is saying, I'm not commanding you to do something that you're that you're not capable of understanding or cannot do because it's too hard. 
He never does that. 12. It is not in heaven that you should say, Who will ascend into heaven for us and bring it to us, that we may hear it and do it. In other words, God is saying, My word is simple. It doesn't have to be brought down to your level and explained. It is simple. It is what it is. Good reason to read a translation that you can trust and that is readable, my, by the way. Because that's the way God intended His Word to be. 13. Nor is it beyond the sea that you should say, Who will go over the sea for us and bring it to us that we may hear it and do it? It is not far away in any sense of the word. That's what God is saying. My word is simple, says God. 14. But the word is very near you, in your mouth and in your heart, that you may do it. God is saying, I've given you my word. It is clear. It is simple. So just do it. I have known people who can take the simple word of God, and by the time they're done talking about it, I have no idea what it even means anymore. They complicate. They spend half hour, an hour, complicating the simple word of God. Just leave it alone and do it. 15. See, I have said before you today, life and good, death and evil. And it's there for them to choose. The Israelites, like us today, have a free will. We can choose good or evil, life or death. It's up to us. 16. And that I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in His ways, and to keep His commandments, His statutes, and His judgments that you may live and multiply, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you go to possess. And that's the really big commandment that we find here in verse 16. Love the Lord your God. That's the big one, because when we love God, all the other commandments will fall into place. 17. But if your heart turns away, so that you do not hear and are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, God says, But I warn you, if you turn away from me, 18, I announce to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not prolong your days in the land which you cross over the Jordan to go in and possess. You're going to die. And you're going to be miserable before you die. 19, I call heaven and earth as, a, as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live God says, choose life. Choose to live. Choose to live the right way because by doing that, you're going you're gonna to be choosing life. Do it because it is right. And if nothing else, do it so your children can have a decent life because how you live is going to affect them. Verse 20, that you may love the Lord your God and that you may obey his voice, and that you may cling to him, for he is your life and the length of your days, and that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them. God is our life. When we live for him, we live. I remember that old saying, life begins at 40. And I don't know about that, but I do know that actually life begins at whatever age you get serious about living for the Lord God because before that it's not right and there's going to be something missing in your life real life is living for God going all out for Him we'll pick up our study in Deuteronomy chapter